Hi everyone, this is Jack, and this is a concise demonstration on how to use Binance. Your time is important, and so is mine, so I'll never waste your time promoting myself or any particular cryptocurrency. So let's begin. Assuming you've typed in Binance.com into your browser, this is exactly where you'll end up. This is an overall view of the current market. You can manipulate each market based on Ethereum or Bitcoin using these tabs. You can arrange each cryptocurrency by price, highest to lowest, or 24 hour change to view which cryptocurrencies have been performing best over the last 24 hours. The 24 hour high and 24 hour low can also be arranged here as well. This is useful information for making trades. If you look at the top ribbon, you can see several different choices for navigating the website. The first is open orders. These are orders you've used using the exchange that have not yet gone through. Your order history is a history of each order you've placed through Binance. And finally, your trade history is a history of each trade you've made in Binance. The difference between your order history and your trade history is essentially your order history also includes orders that have been canceled. Your trade history is only a history of trades that have actually gone through. So your order history will differ slightly because it'll show orders you've canceled. The funds tab shows you which funds you currently have in your account. Similarly, this view can also be manipulated based on the name of the cryptocurrency, your total balance, and the coin name. The value of your entire portfolio is displayed here in Bitcoin and your native currency, which is US dollars for me. I wouldn't worry too much about this Bitcoin balance because that's going to fluctuate as the value of Bitcoin fluctuates. Your emphasis wants to be placed here. Finally, the exchange is where all the information you really need is. Let's work with the basic exchange interface first. Well, at first view, this is a lot of information to take in. But once you learn which each pane represents, it's actually very easy and very useful information. So this left pane right here are sell orders. These are orders to sell a particular cryptocurrency. In this case, it's Tron, TRX, which trades under TRX. Um, and the particular price each order amount here is set for. So this is the amount of cryptocurrency in this column, the price the seller wants, and the total value in Ethereum. Similar to this pane, this is the buy pane. You can look at the price people are willing to buy Tron at, the quantity of currency they're willing to buy, and then that value of that currency in Ethereum here. Now another way to look at this is looking at the depth chart here. And a depth chart essentially can kind of be thought of as a supply and demand curve. Here we have the demand at a particular price. The x-axis here represents the cost at which people are willing to buy a particular quantity of this cryptocurrency. So we can see at this price, there's about two and a half million orders for coins here. Similarly with this curve, this is the number of orders people are willing to sell at a particular price. 
and you can infer a lot about the supply and demand of a particular currency and how much people value it that own it and people that value it that don't own it or are willing to buy it by looking at this curve. I prefer to look at the candlestick chart. The candlestick chart is very useful because it shows price fluctuations in each unit of time. So up here, I have it set to show each square here is a day. So within a day, we can tell based on the size of this line that the price has fluctuated between this amount and this amount in this day. A green line means that the price grew during that unit of time, and a red line means that the price reduced during this unit of time. Now, the difference between the line and the box is pretty important. The line shows the extent that the price traveled to during this unit of time, which, like I said before, is a day. So you can see that the price got as low as here and as high as here, but entered at this level represented by the top of the box and exited this unit of time here. And in this case, this is right now, this is real time, so the box is actually gonna move up, up and down. So a, a better representation of what actually has happened is, is probably something that's happened in the past. So it entered here and exited here, but went as high as the line. Over here, we've got an overview of the cryptocurrency market. You can arrange it by price, highest to lowest, or lowest to highest. You can arrange it by the percent change, which is always useful information as well. Or you can just use it ABC order. Finally, this pane over here is a trade history of what's actually happening. And it's really a manifestation of the transactions that are occurring between these two panes right here. The purchase, or the purchase <laughs> down here, and the selling up here. So this is actually what is happening. So it looks like there are more purchases happening at this moment, which probably would mean the price is moving up at this very moment but you know it's not always the best indicator as these quantities have more to do with it than the number of lines so um, it kind of takes a trained eye to look at that um, so if you'd like to purchase a particular cryptocurrency use the limit market function limit purchase function and set your price here You can manipulate the price based on how you feel the market will move over the next day or two, or right now if you really need to get your hands on this currency. So, if I think the price will drop over the next day or so, because that's how I like to make my orders, I'll manipulate the price and then click on the amount that I want. This little yellow bar here is gonna tell me that at this price, this is the maximum amount I could purchase right now. I then place my order and hit buy. Now this purchase can be seen in open orders that I discussed earlier. So if you click on open orders, you can see that I've got this purchase for Tron at the price I specifi specified for the amount. None of it's been filled because the price hasn't dropped enough to purchase it. Now if I want to, I can cancel this right now, which I will do. Thanks for watching this quick tutorial, and if you enjoyed it and found it useful, the best thing you can do for me is use the reference link below. Thank you very much.